so then uh, we go into the World Series, and when I went up there to hit Alf Eckersley, did you think I had a chance where you saying, oh, don't embarrass yourself? Um, after seeing they you- They sat next to you. Yeah, after seeing you come to the, you know, into the ballpark and, and the way you were moving around, um, I knew it was gonna be on one leg, but I also knew, I said, I said, uh, Gibby's gonna put the ball in play. I didn't think you were gonna strike out there. I just felt like he's gonna put the ball in play. And really when Mike Davis stole second base, it changed, I think, your whole approach too. I think you were just thinking, look at man, a single ties this thing up. I was trying to hit a little one over the shortstop, so I had to believe that. And that's crazy. Were you I, really? I hit it out, yeah. Yeah, but you remember, I remember Mel Didier in that meeting too. Do you remember how he put oh, yeah. he said? Padna, if you get a three-two count on Eckersley, you're a left-handed hitter. Sure as I'm sure as I'm sitting here, you're going to get a three-two backdoor slider. It was in the book. I have the book. Yep. Which, uh, has my book, and he sent I me his book. I remember that meeting. I remember that meeting. Yeah. So I know you don't want to talk about you, but I'm going to talk about it for a second. If you just watch a regular speed and you go, "Oh my God, he he hit that thing with really one hand." But if you slow it down, like I did after, because I'm saying, how did he do it? You are, you, it was like. Take what, that lasso. Yeah, it was right there, but you still had leverage. But it was like, you know, well, obviously you couldn't swing the bat the way you wanted to, but it was one in a million the way you could still keep it back long enough and have everything connected to where you could hit a ball that hard. And um, that was. Yeah, what I remember, was what awesome. I remember was the best. reversal of emotion. It was one of those things where you know when it happened, it's huge. Yeah, well, and I think the fact that we went out and finished the series off is what really... That was the coolest was, thing yeah. that I never really played and you guys no, you finished, you finished off. And what about our celebrations after the game? You oh my it? God, what well, can we say some of them or not? Well, oh yeah. yeah, the fruits of victory. How sweet it is. How sweet it is, it's fruits now, of we, victory. Now we did it after every game, we but did. that was just an affirmation of who we were, don't you think? You know, I think as a group, even though we were relaxed when we played, we had a focus, and there's intensity, we all expected to win. So when you won, there was like a release, like a relief, like, hey, we did this, good. It's one more, that's one more step up that ladder of where we want to get to. I thought an amazing thing looking back, I remember um, when I came up and you spoke Spanish. And I did, you know, I read about it um, years ago and I refreshed my memory. Who t did you do that on your own? Because you did that for Fernando, didn't you? I did it before Fernando. I played winter ball in Dominican and Lise in Santa Domingo for two years. And I remember being down there and we had Latin players in the minor leagues and you, you'd pick up words here or there, you know, as you yeah, talk to your you buddies. Do. But when I got to the Dominican, it was like, you went into a local restaurant, um, menus are in Spanish, everything's in Spanish. Uh, and so to order, you wanted to learn how to speak the language. and. Um, uh, it, it, it's just something that I took to naturally and I'm certainly not fluent but I can hold my own in a conversation and uh, it helped me um, as, as you get in with players like Fernando and uh, you know a guy like Pedro Guerrero when we first started um, uh, you know we first started in the minor leagues uh, spoke very little English and he picked up English like that as you know we would talk back and forth and uh, uh, you know things like that you just you know just you you, you acquire it and um, it helps when you're communicating yeah. uh, on the baseball good, field. Good for managers as yeah. well, huh? You got drafted in 76, you were done in, you played what, 12, 13 years? Yeah, 90, 92 was the last year I played and I was injured after that and went to camp a couple years, but I never played another game. Then you have, there was eight years of coaching and stuff yeah. like that. And then you come to the Angels, you're the longest tenured manager. Are you the longest tenured professional coach? No. Behind no, Belichick? Belichick and um, Popovich in uh, Yeah, in that's right. I mean, I mean, that's a hell of an accomplishment, but where does your philosophy of how you're going to manage a game come from? I think just from our experiences. You know, when you managed, I think you had the a lot of the same philosophies that we kind of absorb as we continue to play the game, and you have success, and there's failures, and you, you kind of feel on what works and what doesn't work, and you want uh, we all want our players just to play the same game, or the same way. We talked about this. Aggressive on the base paths. Um, let's um, force the action. Uh, let's play uh, fundamentally sound defense. Play aggressive all the time. You know, it's the baseball you grew up with. It's, it's uh, you probably got a little more football in you than I did, but it's by the same token, it's it's what you want to put into the team. It's just uh, the experience that we had, I think, as we played.